Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a fun 11-game NBA slate here to end the work week on Friday night. In this one, we are taking a look at Minnesota headed to Denver, taking on the Nuggets. A lot of overs and a lot of reasons to like the over, rather, in this game. We'll take a look at some of the best bets in here for you. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page as well. Got a couple other videos up for you today, including that player props video. We'll look to continue to stay hot after a very good Thursday night. Uh, and also head over to the lines.com as well. Make sure you're checking out who's in and out of those lineups all the way up until game time, as well as headed over to that odds maker. Make sure you're getting the best bets of odds checker, rather. Make sure you're getting the best bets available out there from those odds makers. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or a DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com and find those listings in your area, such as what we've got for tonight. Nate, let's jump into it. Yeah, Nuggets are minus four and a half at home here. That total started at 233 and a half. It's up to 236. Might keep climbing because uh, Minnesota is the team that goes over more than any other team in the league. And especially on the road, it doesn't take a lot of research to figure out that they tend to go over a hell of a lot more. We'll talk about that game in a second, though. Ten other games on this big Friday slate. Toronto minus 10 at Orlando, Dallas minus 8 at Washington, Pacers plus 15 at the Celtics, the Clippers plus 8.5 at Bucks. Both those teams went to overtime on Thursday. The Suns are up to minus 7.5 at Memphis. What was a premier matchup, uh, but now Memphis is going to be missing four key guys in addition to John Morant, it seems. So we break that one down in a separate episode, talk about how you can still bet that game and potentially profit and the Kings are minus two at Houston Pistons are minus four at OKC Blazers plus 15 at San Antonio and then the Pelicans are plus two at the Lakers who are expected to get LeBron and AD back for that one uh yeah I mean 236 is a pretty high total but the last 15 road games for the Wolves they average 122 they allow 122 so (laughs) 11 and four to the over in that span um uh, and 28 and 11 to the over on the season on the road just a huge home road split it's kind of calmed down a little bit lately uh mostly because carl anthony towns has been a little bit banged up and and they haven't necessarily thrived as much offensively but their pace is still fastest in the league uh in that spot on the road uh they and their defense is just so conducive to the other team scoring because they allow the most assists per game and the most free throws per game that is just perfect for uh Nikola Jokic led Nuggets team which also has some really stark home road splits when you look at it lately um the, you know they have the second best defensive rating on the road in March whereas I, at home Not so much. They're allowing 120 points per game. They have the fourth worst three-point defense, third worst uh, regular field goal defense, allowing 50%. Um, On the season, they're 22nd in three-point D at home and first in the league on the road. I I don't know if they're more affected by the thin air or something. It's it's quite strange, but – it, it it's definitely going to spell points for a Wolves team that scores their hot third highest percentage of points off the triple. They sh- they will be without Malik Beasley tonight, but they have plenty of guys who can light it up from deep, including Towns, who's really gone at Jokic in the last couple meetings. Minnesota won the first two meetings, both going over um, with Denver here. 245 and 231 were the totals. The previous three in Denver – All went over, uh, hitting 231, 239, 244. So we're dancing around that total here. I think it is is an opportunity where you might want to tease it if it gets up above 238 or higher. I think we could, you know, it's still a pretty lofty total. But again, Minnesota uh, in March, the fastest pace regardless of home or road. And then you look at where they are on the road, suddenly they drop from fifth in defensive rating Overall, the 15th in defensive rating, they drop from second in net rating to 12th in net rating. And it, it's notable in the all uh, in clutch time since the All-Star break, their offensive rating has really improved as they've learned to win these kind of close games. We know what Jokic does in close games. Denver, 5-3 and three, uh, at home in clutch time with a bit of a faster pace and the, and, and the best assist rate. Um 
in those spots. So I think it, as long as this stays close, both teams should go back and forth getting buckets down the stretch, and hopefully that gets us over. Yeah, and uh, just talking about Denver, because Minnesota has been going over the whole season, 28 and 11, as you said. Uh, they've been going on the road over the whole season and like just way over <laughs> since basically, you know, the month of January uh, on the road as well. Um, and, and what's so weird is, and this is why we talk about looking at the season in segments and not looking at, you know, what's hap- what's what happened in, in October and November. Uh, there's some teams that are going to show consistency throughout the, the Suns being one of them, the best team from start to finish. Uh, a great example of a team that is not the same is uh, the Warriors for one. Um, but then, you and that's injury related. The, the Nuggets have been the same team all season in terms of who's been playing. There was a bit more Michael Porter Jr. in the earlier part of the season, but he also isn't. Exa- he was never helping their defense. And what's wild is that the, in the first like two months of the season, uh, basically through the month of November, this was the best defensive team at home. You'll remember that in especially in their first roughly ten games at home, they had a, a better than a hundred, uh, a lower than a one hundred defensive rating at home. Um, just looking at some of the games, I mean, they weren't playing cupcakes. Or, or cupcake offenses at home either. They, I mean, the Spurs is a good offense. There's the Cavs in there. Uh, the Mavs were sh- slow to start. Um, but then, you know, you've got the Pacers and the Hawks, uh, even the Blazers, the 76ers, and the Bulls. All these games, in those games, they, they, they gave up less than 100 points uh, in about eight of their first 12 uh, and, and, and gave up less than 110 in almost in 10 of those 12. So it's just insane that they were that good on defense. And then it's just a total flip at this point uh, at home specifically uh, to where they fell that bad in, in terms of their defensive rating uh, in, in that month. But uh, what's really great and, and what would have been a really bad sign for me as I continue to wait for them to win the division with my futures bet on them uh, is that their offense has gone just, you know, bananas as well. And, and obviously we know why that is. It's, it's, it's Nikola Jokic uh, and what have been, you know, what have, has been insane numbers uh, in the, in the month of uh, this past month of March at this point, um, they did go through a bit of a slide at one point and, and they were hitting a few unders as a result um, just a, a few months ago, just basically through the month of February, uh, especially when, they were uh, um, on the road, but at home still going over a bit. So um, I think the trend has been going long enough for us with them at home at this point that we should feel good about that. I do like them uh, to win this one as well. Yeah, I think that Denver does have a bit more to play for right now. Uh, I think you want to take you, you want that five seed uh, versus the six seed, to be honest, uh, if you're Denver, that you want to play those Golden State Warriors uh, rather than having to take on a Mavs team that looks a lot better right now in the three seed. Uh, the Jazz currently sit in six by half a game uh i think they are about to beat the, the um they, the beat the lakers so they are going to be tied uh and in which case you know five six is going to matter hugely for both these teams as they try to win the division i do think there's a bit more to play for there for the nuggets as well as the fact that they've been unable uh to, to beat the wolves with just putrid putrid defense but i think that'll continue to be the case and then they'll continue to, to actually pound them on offense uh, the way that they have been as well yeah, I mean, I th- another way to bet this is to take that first half over. The Wolves have been lights out in the first half, especially on offense. And you look at the last two meetings with the Nuggets this season, 69 and 75 points in the first half. Kind of mm-hmm. uh, took the wind out of their sails and then used a little bit of superior depth to run the Nuggets off the floor. I mean, maybe that's the the recipe for beating a, a team that just depends so much on one guy to lead them in every category. Uh, but down the stretch, the scoring did peter out a lot. Only 35 combined points in their last game, which is why it ended – I mean, in the last quarter of their last game, which is why it ended at 231. So maybe you want the first half over more than you want the game total over if you feel like it's creeping up too high. But there is plenty of reason to see that – that both teams are going to score here, that both centers are going to shine. Uh, Jokic, after posting a great defensive rating in three meetings with Towns prior to this season, has a 122 defensive rating in the head-to-head matchups. I mean, he's just tired at this point. Towns is is has something to, to prove, and every time he goes out there. Um, and again, yeah, with the Nuggets home road splits, while they're 6-4 and four to the under, in their last 10 road games, they're 10 and 2 to the over their last 12 at home, allowing 118, averaging 118 with a 119 offensive rating and defensive rating, dropping dimes everywhere. Uh, again, we talk about Jokic really in the last 10 games, regardless of venue, 30 assists per game, tops in the NBA. I mentioned the Wolves give up the most assists per game on the road. 
Uh, Denver is 7-2-1 and one to the over in those last 10, shooting 52% from the field as a team. So I think as long as they're giving it up, they're going to they're going to be able to dish it right back in terms of keeping up, keeping pace offensively, because Minnesota is not stopping anybody. Not not this particular team, uh, the way, you know, Pat Beverly and, and Jared Vanderbilt are not throwing themselves at Jokic. Um, it's it's on towns to do that. And he's not even fully healthy. He's been kind of bullied by Dwight Powell and DeAndre Ayton in the last couple of weeks because he's not healthy. So I think you look at yeah. Jokic props here and, and and wolves overs in the first half or, or the combined over in the first half yeah. as, as some other ways to bet this yeah I, I like your bet a lot there for the first half i mean on on the season uh these teams are, are crushing in the first half uh denver is third in points that they score more than 59 points in the first half uh, minnesota scores more than 58 points in the first half on the season however it gets even better in the month of march minnesota's averaging 64 points in the first half uh and that's number one for sure and then denver is fifth at 61 that's a total of 125 you've got to imagine that as it sits right now at 235 um you know they, they usually keep it pretty even right in first half and second half scoring so the, the first half total you're looking at about 117 and a half uh these teams outscoring that by a combined you know uh, eight points uh, basically when they play uh, anybody at this point in the first half or over the last month of the season um which is not that uh uncharacteristic as i just mentioned they're both in the top five on the season as a whole they've just been going ballistic even more so uh just adding to some of the numbers we told you about how they're playing in this respective places uh in the month of march as well so that is all the time we have for you in this one make sure to like and subscribe to that page and check out those other couple videos we have up for you on this fun nba slate tonight and until we see you next happy betting